Cody. Hey, Alex. I'm Randy. Nice to see you. Yeah. Hey, DJ. Solly's ducking him. Solly's ducking him. It's a true. Well, what did you say yesterday? Oh, he gives me so much shit about Scotland sleeping in, won't go talk to Ricky, and then everything comes around in Sweden. <laughs> This was one of the one of the parts of the trip I really did not know what to expect. I can't point to something specifically at Visby that's like that's why I liked it so much. It was more of a feeling I had. It's hard to be stressed, it's hard to be worried, it's hard to feel anxious when you're in a setting like that. It just felt like summer vacation, I, I think, is the overriding picture in my mind. Folks away from their normal homes, out on this island, on vacation, and enjoying themselves in all kinds of manners. Obviously, we were there to play golf, and the Visby Golf Club was exceptional. It was, it was really a special place. the last time I overslept. It was mid-September 2016 in Kiev, Ukraine. And it involved a lot more alcohol than last night did. Truly do not do not have an explanation. I don't know if I forgot to set an alarm. I don't know if I turned it off. Woke up in a cold, hot combination sweat with Cody knocking on my door at 10 o'clock. Not how you want to wake up. Wondering if like, the, are the guys in the car downstairs like, ready to go? I, for, I totally couldn't comprehend what the timing was and all i knew is i was late and hadn't packed glad to see icarito's up uh he overslept by 90 minutes this morning <laughs> of course was bailed out by neil also oversleeping it's oversleeping worse than i did so it was kind of like a, you don't have to unru outrun the bears outrun the slowest guy taking the ferry we're driving from about 45 minutes south to Ninas Ham to take the catch the ferry to Gotland, to Visby. It's about a three hour ferry ride. Are you worried about getting got? Of course, of course, it's in the name. How could you not be? Out in Visby, there's a, uh, it's what week, week 35? Week 30. Week 30, which, which is. The over 30s, I guess, get out to Visby for week 30. And it sounds like it's just, it's, it's a on. Target rich environment for, for our single, yeah. very single friend over here. So we'll, um, yeah, that's exciting. I, I, I'm gonna hopefully re regale them with uh, tales from my week 15 at Spicebush. Maybe maybe we could get an international exchange program going. Hour and a half late, our, our day could start. Let's, yeah. let's do yeah. it. All right, well, let's get on the ferry. I'm excited to, to hit the water. Let's ride. Well, I got either good news or bad news. Uh, I don't think a yellow post-it on our hood it says 1100 kroner. Yeah, it uh, just really feels, uh, you know, I don't have the Google lens out, but that really feels like it's probably a ticket. Take cards. <laughs> that was helpful. Fill up at pump two. Yeah, pump two, we're rocking it, man. This is the way to travel. You can add this to the things that are sick, but yeah. yeah. You know, when you fly into a big city and fly out, like you don't get to see a lot along the way. You don't get to see what's outside the main city. There's something to like traveling where you, you don't have to be on the controls. You're not driving. You're not worried about the next turn. And you know, you get to see a lot of scenery along the way. It's like train travel, like traveling by train in and out of small towns and stuff through, you know, foreign lands. I find super entertaining because you're just, you're, you're, at, you're experiencing on the ground. And now we're experiencing by, by waterway, this is delightful. Well, it makes it makes travel 
it actually makes you enjoy the journey. Yeah. Maybe you met it before for life. Ooh, how about that? The mega bonus is the friends we made along the way. That's life. right. Where plane travel is, is not pleasant. Cody, Mr. Solly, myself are sitting at the Surf Logette, which is a, a glamping ex experience uh, down here on the Baltic Sea. But uh, Solly, you and I kind of got stuck in the tent with, uh, with the drill sergeant. I'm going to look at that mini bar, Solly. That will bankrupt NLU. You're all worried about the Firefest situation. No, I'm not. It seems like a pretty established established spot. After the success of Chess Fest, I don't have any. I think we're, we're, we know what we're doing as far as, you know, tent living goes. It's pretty ideal, huh? Way, way, way. Cody, have you ever slept anywhere so dangerous and so <laughs> in the wild? No, not that I can talk about it. I've, I've literally never spent a night in these bougie ass tents that we're about to stay in. <laughs> Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Cody. Welcome to my crib. We're out here on the sea in Gotland, Sweden, baby. I got my homie TC. What's up, y'all? <laughs> my big homie Randy. What's up, guys? I want to see this crib. Let's go. <laughs> I want to take you and show you my place. Come on in. Where's the magic happen, dog? <laughs> This is our humble abode. We can sleep four in here. We're running 220 volt all across. Got a fireplace over here in the corner just in case we get a little bit cold. Let's check out our sauna. It's hot as shit, man. Oh my God, it's so hot. Big Dad. Cheers. <laughs> Keep it close. DJ and I had a chance to run into the old city of Visby, which reminded me of like a medieval city. They have a big wall that goes around the old town. Even you couldn't hate that dog big. No, of course not. Can I buy you a little cafe for the courtyard? That'd be great. We meandered through the wall and ended up finding this little hotel inn with a, with a little cafe. We parked there, we enjoyed a wonderful coffee and the most delicious uh, pastry. And then we set off and we explored a little bit. I think we got most of what we we're looking for. I just need you to joker down these steps real quick. <laughs> this is where I really felt like I was in like a, an old European city was just looking out over the orange roofs of the old city. You have the, the, the church that, that dominates the landscape. And I don't know, I, I just really, like sightseeing like that it was a real treat before we left the island. Is this shower time? Shower time. Will you give us a review? I will. I make sure my skirt doesn't blow up. Be good content. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> No task. No, no task. task. no task. No task. No task. How's the shower, how's the shower they situation? They got like a little timer on them, you know, so you don't yep. use too much water. Oh, really? How but, much time? Uh, you have any flip flops with you? No. That's pretty clutch. Maybe you can borrow mine if you're nice. That'd be very nice. Thank uh, you. But I feel refreshed. I'm ready to go. So this is Surf Logi Life. We got our welcome drink. That is our view. I'll sit here and have a little cocktail. tastes a little bit better with a little sand in there, a little grit. Swedish people know how to summer, don't they? Yeah, they take their summer very seriously. What do you think? Yeah. kind of prefer the more stadium golf <laughs> feel with, you know, softer turf, bent grass. But, I mean, this will be okay. This work. This is... Um, it's it's really close to to uh, to my heart. Lynx golf is my favorite golf of any style in the world, and I've never played Lynx golf in Sweden. And here we were on this island, on this little tip, wind whipping. I was ready to roll. My expectations were low, but man, once you see the little clubhouse uh, with this just stone patio attached to it, a putting green, a lighthouse. Honestly, you could pick that up and drop it somewhere on the coast of Scotland and it would fit right in. The wind is a factor there. I'm sure it plays different seasonally as well. I, don't, I can't say enough good things about Visby. I love that place. So I'm not going to say these are the best golf courses I've played, 
but the sum of the golf experience was like, you know, more than the parts, I guess. That could be interesting. I knew this was gonna happen. So, I'm not, God, this is a, lo it's a long story. We've it's had very this boring. whole thing. It's very boring. We've always had this, this debate about the world golf rankings yeah. and whether it weights European tour wins too heavily. They've long given me shit that I've had a beef against you, which I do not. Yeah, but it's fair. Inner Bob Lahiri was also a marker in that. And he, we've made nice, so I'm glad yeah. that we can make nice now yeah, as well. Yeah, no, but it's... You gotta shake hands. It's a very boring story, but <laughs> everyone's, everyone's like, why do you hate Nor? And I'm like, I don't. I do no, not. It's become like a parody like, of himself. <laughs> he's got a point. I still haven't, I still haven't won on, the, on your tour, so. Where were you after round one? So was plus three net. Plus three net. Neil, you're plus one net. And I'm minus three net. Lead group, we're gonna do battle today. It's gonna be a war of attrition. Nice. Thanks. That's a tough first hole. Yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> a little wobbly there to start. Yeah. So, Alex, when did you start coming here? Well, uh, like 2017, uh, my parents wanted a place where like, well, you see in the background, maybe you see my, my brother's kids, my kids, yeah. and then uh, we wanted a place to see each other. So now we found this and, and uh, everybody loves it. I've spent so many hours here. Uh, when we saw it, when we did the renovation here back in uh, 2007 through to nine, I borrowed a, a caravan from a friend of mine and parked it behind the, the shed. Stayed out here until dark and, and uh, you know, fine, fine shape, the, the, all, all the green surrounds and everything, all the greens here. Uh, it was just fantastic. You learn a lot from that. Over. I like it that it, it's always in pretty good condition. You know, um, you got enough practice facilities. You got 27 holes. And sometimes I wake up because the, you know, it's light. So we go up at four, play 36, and then back for breakfast at like 8.30. So then you can spend the day with the kids and nobody complains. You know, you've done yours. Keeping everybody happy. Yeah, you know. You're the hardest working man in Sweden right now. Everybody's on vacation, you have to work. Sit. Yeah, nice, nice one. Putt. No doubles today, Randy, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I hear you there. I, I don't know how many holes we changed. It, it, was, it was actually quite a few. And just to make it fit to, to, to have these three loops of nine to come back to the club, start and finish by the clubhouse. Uh, the third hole here was, was one of the holes, first holes that we renovated 15 years ago and I, I've never liked it since you know it's it's just been at the back of my head and I've, I've wanted to redo that hole again, over and over eventually I proposed a, a, a new hole and, and seeded it this May and and uh, hopefully opening up uh, this uh, this fall hell yeah run forever bitch Please. they're building a new third oh is that what that is yeah that's a brand new hole he said we can play it later. He said we can play it this morning, but I was like, we'll play the first one and then we'll, we'll go back out with you and play the second one. Great shot. Thanks. I started playing when I was, when I was 10. A friend of mine uh, took me out to the local club. I got better quite quickly. In the end, uh, I, I quit school, turned pro early. Played on the Swedish tour for a couple of years and, and only did one year at the Challenge Tour and uh, got my European tour card in 93 okay. and played there till 2007. I had a bigger desire to design than to play. So uh, I, I, I quit. I, I, I still had a lot of good golf in me, I think, but I, I'm happy with my career. I won three times on the European tour and, and played the Ryder Cup, won the Ryder Cup. Uh, in 2002, and uh, I've had a good career. What a oh, par. Wow, what a par. Fighting for my life out here, big. <laughs> Great putt. Great port. Thanks. 162. 
These new ones lock on so quick. Come on, help them out, help them out. It's hard, like you steer it too far into it, it doesn't take it. If you get it started left of it, it's gonna ride it. Great shot. God, we're through five holes and I'm like, this is, this is about as good as it gets. This is incredible. Felt like I was away from the world out here. I mean, I, we kind of are. Overwhelming pleasantness was, was running through my head from obviously our experience at the golf course, sitting on the patio. It's nice and it's like no frills, no bullshit, which I know you said is like the Swedish, like that's just how Swedes are. I'm gonna start looking up like Zillow. They don't have Zillow this here, is, which hurts. This is like a massive happy place. I had a bachelor party here five years ago. So all the guys in the bachelor party, they're all golfers. So they are now like finding houses here, they're convincing their wives to hang here. So, so it's like, for me, it's perfect, yeah. How much do you practice when you're here? How many hours a day do you uh, Well, I try to play at least 18 and then then I go out like with my kid and you know, they're used to being here so I can practice and then my parents come down, they take the kids. Yeah. So then I play like another hour, two hours and then. We've heard like, legends of, of how, how much you practice. Yeah, but that's that's at home or okay. like when I was younger. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or like, you know, I like practicing. But. A boundary is not marked on the course. Replay a ball with a kind of duty. It's like Pacific Grove. Yeah. If you hit it in three fairway, you're OB. Number six, how the hell do you play it? <laughs> Wisely. <laughs> I have no idea how to play six. Uh, me neither. <laughs> I, I doubled it today. <laughs> what do you hit off the tee? No, I hit driver and try to go for it, but I'm trying to get that bush on the left of the bunker taken out. Yeah. So it's like a little bit more friendly. There's not a lot of space. Friendly. Yeah. Because you can hit two pretty good shots and walk away with six. Come on, TC, you bitch. Grab your sack, get in the game. Grab your task. Hell yeah, get in the game, baby. I mean, that's one of the new holes uh, that we uh, somehow got to build uh, in 2007. And we couldn't touch certain things there and, and the, the hole just kind of, it is what it is. And the key is to play the right tee, you know, so you have the, the correct length. Because if, you, if you're too short on that tee shot, it's a, very difficult second shot. Oh yeah. I don't know if that's covered. No, that's what you want right there. <laughs> he hit one, he punched one out. He hadn't walked around to see the hole yet. He I, it. I He's like, where it. is it? I'm like, dude, you went 70 yards into the Baltic. <laughs> like not even close. <laughs> it's hard to describe how far to the sea he went. Out of here? Really? In the Baltic. And he goes to me, he goes, so? And I go, you, <laughs> out of here. He was like, what are you talking about, man? It was, it probably hooked like a good 40 or 50 yards. <laughs> you're Stay fine. Up. Yeah, you're in the, uh, looks like in a, maybe leaked in the left bunker. No way. It was one of those ones I, I made an eight. And I wanted, I wanted to go back and immediately play it again. Cause I was like, man, I, I would have played that so radically yeah. differently, you know? Yeah, we can go now. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh my Woo! God, that's Get up, so bro. good. Get up, oh, oh, oh too nippy. Perfect. Sit the fuck down. Come on, Randy, let's make a five. They said it couldn't be done. Yes. Yeah! Yeah! What a par. There'd be like two fives there today. God, that's good. <laughs> what a birdie, man. Let's Made go. It? What a birdie. Nice putt. I'll take four on that one. God, that, was that hole is an adventure. I felt like I was at Royal Melbourne yeah. for some of the holes, uh, like Kingston Heath, par threes, uh, 
Cypress Point. Like, I know I'm throwing out outrageous Pacific Grove. You want to throw Nash National, Shinnecock, <laughs> Wingfoot. I met with them out here in, in uh, a really cold November day. It was just sleet in the air and, and uh, you know, tried to explain what they were after. And um, I convinced them that this was the right thing to do and with, to build uh, uh, not the small revetted bunkers, but but more uh, uh, bigger ones, and with a strong influence from from the sand belt down in Melbourne. To have it like a, a border between the sort of groomed fairways and greens, and then just make it sort of disappear out into the wilderness. And this hybrid, or whatever you want to call it, that we came up with between Gotland and and, and Melbourne, uh, I think it works really well. Ah. Uh. I feel bad about that. Oh, oh nice putt. Good there, Sock. Yeah, good with that. It has Randy written all over it. Centerline tree, a bench carved out of the bushes. Big man's gonna gonna really enjoy this one. It's not really in play. It kind of frames the hole. You got another tree up by the green that's a little bit more in play. But great, great hole. I played, uh, nah, okay. I mean, I'm in no nipple niche right now. My, oh, dude. My chipping? No, like we have to empty the grease trap. Yeah, I'm thinking about starting like an eco-friendly grease trap company, helping these small business owners, you know, do what's right and get rid of their waste. Yeah. I had to uh, shower like four yeah, or five times. It's really, really, really slick out there. Watch your step, watch your step. Total grease ball shit. Yeah. He was operating a fryer at, at, at yeah. uh, McDonald's. Lots of Morton salt and Tons of grease in the trap. Had to take it out back. Holy. Neil. So Great good. play. So good. Woo. Great up and down. Great four. Yeah, to borrow a phrase from TC, I was quite taken. Quite taken by the by this place. There's, a, there's just a general vibe here. Maybe fuel. Yeah, um, hard to be stressed out. I was a little frustrated with myself because I liked it so much and I didn't feel like I gave it my best shot. One over on the front nine. Um, I think that puts me in pretty decent shape. Five over, six over, seven, eight, nine, ten, forty-four. Sounds right. A lot of golf left. How do you think it's going back there? Uh, they seem to be vibing. I don't think the pie man's playing all that well. No. Uh, well, I, I certainly won't won't tell anybody how to feel, and I, I won't. Uh... I won't disagree with any of your takes on the vibe, the walk. Uh, I just think I fucked it up by playing golf today, unfortunately. <laughs> That's the only thing I could have done wrong. Showing up off the plane with just no idea what your golf game's doing and then cranking the wind up to 30, not a good spot for that. It's all I could ever ask for out of a golf shot. But the coolest thing here is that it's not like somebody putting up crazy amounts of money and building the coolest place on earth. Here's like, I don't know how much it is, 700 bucks a year membership. If they got a little extra at the end of the year, they put it into the course. And then, you know, it's it's just like anybody can be a member. I mean, this is 85% of the clubs in Sweden. 90% of the clubs are like yeah. this. Uh, and this is uh, seven or $800 a year f uh, is is quite high to be honest. Kids everywhere, nobody cares because everybody's 700 bucks. You can't complain that much. You yeah, know? I saw somebody's kids so. driving a Tonka truck around on the yeah. green last night. I don't know who well, those were, but. No, but those are mine. <laughs> but, uh, I didn't want to do it to him until match play, but we're going to have to switch to the Cowboy swing. Now that we've chunked about 14 shots, shot about 65 on the front. It's time to switch. So, Kawa, the, the, this next nine holes is, is for you. Any space over there or is that dead? Uh, hit a provisional. <laughs> That's good there. That good for six? <laughs> of course. Oh man, Cody. That was so much closer. How much has it evolved since you've been coming here? Well, yeah, but like, years. One year they put like 150,000 back in the, into the course. The next year maybe 100, or next year 50. But they try to fix the bunkers, and then like five holes are fixed, and then the next year another five, and then they kind of rotate. And I maybe come with a little suggestion. Um, maybe the next year they fix the range a little bit, so it's a little better, a little better. This is 
one of, if not the best conditioned course I've ever played. These greens are literally perfect. Perfect speed, perfect roll. They're just, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Shot? Yeah. It's coming back, guys. You got any advice? Just when things are really bad. Yeah. <laughs> you got any experience with that? I do. Um, it's such a, it's such an awful place to be. Um, I'm enjoying the scenery. I feel like that's step one. I know. Enjoy um, where you're at. Yes. Make the best of it. Yeah. But it's just not tight right now. <laughs> I know. I know. How does the swing feel? Is it just like completely lost or do you kind Totally of lost. No, 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 yeah. totally lost. I get, to, I feel like I get to the top pretty well. Transition's fucked. Downswing changes every hole. Uh, we're, anything into the wind, absolutely no chance. Yeah. Um, putting pretty nice. It's just, they're all for- I was gonna say, you have been. <laughs> they're all just, I've- You've had some really good chips. Rarely gotten to the green uh, within regulation. So it's- uh, you know, that's a bright spot though, I guess. Just try to enjoy all the non-golf stuff. Exactly. And get home and put the clubs away and like start fresh in two, three weeks. <laughs> kind of can. What if you're on day three of a, you know, two week trip? Yeah, that's hard. It's, it's not a fun, it's just not fun. I think just simplify and get back to tempo. Like, and try I like that. Best you can, just quiet your mind. Yeah. How's that? It sounded and looked really good. Seems like Sweden has more pro golf exports on the men's and women's side. The punch is above its weight compared to its population and its climate. How would you explain that? Well, yeah, I think maybe two reasons. Like one, that nobody cares if juniors everywhere because it's cheap enough to play and the product is good enough for that price. Everybody's happy. Um, and light, like you experience, it's light, like long days during the summer. So like my brother's kids, they're 11 or 13. They play golf for like 10 hours a day for two or three months and then they come you know, maybe back to like the city where they play uh, tennis or football or hockey. Golf comes from, from, from being a sport rather than a game. Uh, the more you play on course when you're a kid, the better chances you are that, that you become a, a, a really good player uh, and not just hitting balls on the range. So it's, um, I think that's the main reason. It's it's very accessible and affordable and, and just like ice hockey or football or whatever. I think my kids go to training, like training all summer, free golf balls, free play on the whole course for like 50 bucks. I mean, you got teaching too. You know? Smashed his face with an iron. It's clearly marked in the book. The lake behind the green. The lake. You know, 30 yards over the green. Major Icarito moment here. We gotta make him put the put the Icarito cover on. Ah. Oh. <laughs> that was so perfect. I didn't even see that. Just like Neil, he didn't see that either. <laughs> How a lot of known unknowns out here. Shout out to Rumsfeld. Good Grease shot, ball? Neil. No, I think honestly, it's one of the three best courses, one of my three favorite courses I've ever played. Sincerely? What? Yeah, really. Wow. I'm, ever? I'm right there ever. with him. That's phenomenal. I think it really crystallized though when you turned and got to the back nine, it just didn't stop. It, it just had such great continuity and flow that, yeah, by like mid back nine, I was like, oh shit, I, like I love this place. I, I thought it was just exceptional. It's every thing I want in a golf course. Truly, That's one through 18. A, damn. That's phenomenal. Come on. Come on.
Come on. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> love the par threes. I love the quirk. I love the fairway bunkering. It made it made you think on every tee shot. Uh, the greens, like all the runoffs. I love the conditioning. Um, God, I just like just the the feeling you get here. Made me immediately want to go back out and play more golf, even though I probably shouldn't. Yeah. Should probably rest the bod. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really impressed. The biggest change and also the most controversial uh, was was the first hole. It was a, an original hole played a, a, just down here, a, away from the clubhouse with the seat to the right. So Short current current 18 yeah. was one. Yeah, Go shortish ahead. par four. Uh, and that was voted one of the best opening holes in this country, uh, like five years prior to to my arrival here and and um, and in my proposal obviously it was played as a par five going the other way it took some balls to propose that <laughs> i guess but i said well so they asked me i said wait, wait, wait how can you do this and, and i said well we're, we're turning one of the best opening holes in sweden uh, into one of europe's best or possibly the world the best finishing holes instead mm -hmm. So they were, oh, all right, well, <laughs> let's do it then. <laughs> Kill it. Oh, dang, just caught the lip. Guy, you smoked that. Competition, uh, the TV execs aren't loving where we're sitting right now. Uh, DJ and Randy, DJ is plus 30, Randy plus 27 net so it's going to be a battle for the four or five there okay. the carter brothers uh tc is plus 14 neil is plus 13. the tv execs love love potential carter brothers matchup they though. could match it's going to be kind of like uh like the last round of divisional where it's like oh well you guys can fight it out for home field and then Just you're don't gonna get hurt you're gonna play each other in the playoffs yeah don't get hurt so you don't can win hurt. that one but it doesn't really mean anything unless you win the next one i might have to rest my driver and then uh that's a great idea i managed to get around an even net so i have a 13 shot lead uh, That'd be tough to blow. We got to check with Justin Ray. Has anyone ever blown a 13 shot final final round lead? It would be it would be tough. Um, I threw. I thought I was. I started to sweat a little bit. I threw one back and tripled 16 today. Um, but balls starting to kind of come out the window a little bit. So, but stroke play doesn't really matter. Hey, it's here, all about here. the match. Here, here. I lost a, a match to Randy three days ago, and now I've separated him by 30 shots. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Visby was great because it was great to go somewhere where they automatically speak Swedish to you. That you don't stick out like a tourist. There's not a lot of American tourists that go to a place like this. And to go experience what their vacation's like, what their culture's like, what their restaurant scene's like, that's what stuck out to me. And that scene at dinner that night, looking out over the water, it felt like we were in like Manhattan Beach, somewhere on the west coast of California. It was one of the most vivid images I have of the trip is sitting in that restaurant. I think that was one of the moments where it struck us like, man, we, we are in a really, really cool place. It just had that that presence, that gravity, that that history. Um, and it, it, it was a special, special place. 